Members of the Senate, I rise and I want to speak generally but briefly about and in opposition to HB 87. I know that last time I, I basically laid out the case against SB 40. I can't really add a heck of a lot more to it than that. I don't feel that this is a lot different than that. And in fact, these bills have been moving along at the same track through the same process. And, and other than pride of authorship um, between a House member and a Senate member, I'm not sure whether we would have wound up with much, of a sim much different of a result other than a bill number. Um, I do want to say that, that my concerns have not been addressed by the rewrite of this bill in spite of the, the esteemed efforts by the senator from the 30th and others to try and perfect this language um, and to make it constitutional. I, I suppose at some point, um, to use the analogy, no matter how expensive the lipstick is you put on that pig, and no matter how fancy a dress I go down to Saks Fifth Avenue and buy and dress up that pig in, it's probably still a pig in a dress with lipstick at the end of the day. Um, the bill is going to generate lawsuits at the end of the day, regardless of what anyone says. And in spite of the efforts of folks on here, uh, folks that were working on this, that's basically what you're going to end up with is full employment and overworked staff over in the AG's office because we're going to be litigating this issue just as Arizona is doing with their SB 1070. And we didn't have to get to this point. We're not, no one's up for election this year. No one's leaving this chamber to head off to a primary that I'm aware of. We could have waited um, to see how the Supreme Court was going to rule on the Arizona statute before doing this. It's clearly on a fast track over there to have gotten a U.S. Court of Appeals ruling in less than a year. We would have a decision in time to react on this before anyone has to face a primary challenger from their right. Um, in any primary, we could have dealt with that and we could have had the time to take a look at exactly what's going on here and what we need to do to make sure that, in fact, we address whatever the Supreme Court is going to say, not the Ninth Circuit, not a judge out, in, a federal judge out in Arizona, all well and good, and I'm glad folks are reading those, but I would rather have a Supreme Court decision telling me what I can and can't do because it's Supreme Court decisions that are going to govern us. It's Supreme Court decisions that are going to be costing us millions of dollars in legal fees. Not to mention, and folks have come up here and talked about what's going to be happening with the convention business and the boycotts. No matter what you pass here, you're going to have the boycotts. No matter what, if you've decided you're going to pass something, you're going to have the boycotts. You're going to, you're going to ruin the chances of NCAA Final Four tournaments. You're going to ruin the chances of future Super Bowls. You're going to ruin the chances of conventions small, medium, and large across this state, which may not affect many of y'all, but certainly do affect um, many of us, many of our districts, and certainly affects my district along the 85 corridor and kicks it in the teeth in terms of our hotel industry and in terms of our retail industry in terms of our service industries because we serve a lot of those conventioneers when you have the big conventions come in and there's overflow crowds that have to get out of the large Atlanta hotels that are in the senator from the 36th and, um, and, uh, and uh, the senator from the 39th district. Um, they're in my district. They're not going to be able to come there and I do appreciate the effort of folks to try and clean up and put various versions and various other fancy dresses on this pig. Um, some of them are fancier dresses than others. Some of them are prettier than others. Some of them probably save you a little bit of, of money here and there. Um, I would say that, that we need to look clearly at the First and Second Amendments and look at those very carefully because those issues that deal with racial profiling are the issues that are going to get us boycotted. Even if you think you've drafted something that might stand constitutional mu muster, you're going to, you've drafted something that's going to kick us in the teeth economically. And we just had a revenue bill, a, a tax bill, die in the House because it was going to cost us $120 million. Trust me, this bill is going to cost us more than $120 million. And I want everyone here to understand what you're doing to education, to transportation, to health care, 
towards keeping bad guys locked up. You're taking 100 and more than $120 million a year out of our ability to do that. And at the same time, you're passing on to local governments mandates to do things that they are ill-equipped to do, ill-trained to do, and certainly outside of a few metro Atlanta counties, ill-funded to do. But to their credit, the amendments one and two do try and address those issues. And if you want to address the issue of whether we take a multi-million dollar, eight-digit, nine-digit cut in our budget, you'll, you'll consider voting for one of those two amendments, as I will be.